Hey guys, welcome back to another art video. So in this video, it's going to be another oil pastel painting and I'm going to do a portrait of Tracy Perkins and how I got the idea of doing this project was through looking at my subscriber list. Whenever I do get a new subscriber and I notice that they're also posting videos, I do check out their channel. And so a few days ago, I stumbled upon Tracy Perkins' channel, and she's an artist too. She also does a lot of crafting videos and product reviews, so be sure to check her out. And when I saw her profile picture, I just thought that I really need to draw this woman. If I don't, I'll regret it. So it inspired me a lot, and so I just sent her a simple message asking for some reference photos so I could draw a picture for her. And it's really hard for me to ask people, especially that don't know me, really well if I could draw them. A lot of people that I've approached and asked if I could draw them, they just get like freaked out and say no right away. But as soon as I figured out that Tracy was an artist, I was a little more confident to ask her if I could do a painting of her because uh, all of us artists kind of understand each other. We're all looking for inspiration and sometimes we find them at the weirdest times in the weirdest places. So it's a little hard to cope with that. Anyway, onto the materials. I'm using my Royal Langnickel oil color paper with both the new and the old full sets of Craypaws Expressionist oil pastels along with some of my cheaper De La Rowney oil pastel sets and so the technique I was going for was that start off with the cheaper oil pastels which are the De La Rowney uh, pastels which are a bit harder and then start layering and blending on top of the cheaper pastels with Craypaws that have a bit more softer texture and so I was also occasionally using my hardy eraser stick to get some of the details in her eyes and the hair especially, as well as a fan brush to sweep away some of the pastel crumbs whenever the paper started accumulating a whole bunch of pastel crumbs. And sometimes I would push the crumbs back into the paper with the f using the flat side of my nail just to like cover up some area that I felt it didn't cover up and so I had a lot of control with using the surface of my nail so I found that technique to be really useful. I will say this that since the oil pastels I was using in this specific portrait were more on the waxier side rather than the oilier side and so there was a limit to how much I could layer and spread the color. A problem that I was encountering a few times during the painting process was that once an area was already loaded with color, when I decided to either make the color darker or change the color around, the pastel was starting to scratch off the overlaying color and then like I would just see a faint color under the white paper. And so I lost like all the layers of color that I built up because I just wanted to overlay a new color just to change the the tint a little bit. So when that happens, it's sort of like that scraffito effect that like Craypaws keeps advertising. Like that's a way you can do art by just scratching off the top layer of oil pastels. But I've never been a fan of that scraffito, mostly because I think almost all scratch art looks really messy and it's just not my style. So when I was working with um, waxy oil pastels, I definitely had to keep track and know when to stop layering because if you keep layering, you can definitely overwork it and then you'll start losing color and losing all your layers. And then you'll just have to go through the same process to get to build up to the color that you had before. And it's just a whole bunch of extra necessary work that I found kind of tedious. With oily pastels, it's a little different. The color will start mixing and spreading the pigment the more you layer. So it's not that it'll like scratch it off because it's really soft and creamy. It'll just start mixing. However, you do have to be careful because there's a higher chance of over mixing colors when you're using the oily oil pastels and then you might end up with like muddy colors. So you're more likely to end up with muddy colors if you use the oil oily pastels rather than the waxy pastels. So that's something to be careful of. Pretty much you need to be careful with either media you're using, either the harder waxier ones or the softer creamier ones. They work differently and it, I think it's just important to know how they layer and blend differently so you know when to stop working on a certain area of your image. 
And now I'm just going to give a little life update because I feel like it's kind of interfering with how often I'm posting videos on my YouTube channel. So I did finally get a job. It's not in art though. I work for a grocery store and I get really tired when I come home from it. So that's another component that's obstructing my creative process and it just like I just lose inspiration because I'm so tired and my legs and my back start aching from a full day of work. And we're also looking to move out in the next few months so whenever that starts up I'm gonna have to take another break from my YouTube channel because obviously moving is very time consuming and so I'm gonna have to have a lot of time to like pack and stuff. But on to the good news, I finally got a new Blue Yeti microphone and it was kind of like my late Eid present to myself so I hope you're enjoying the excellent sound quality in this video. Previously, I've just been using my camera microphone and the quality is okay, like it's decent, but it would pick up the slightest background noises, like it was really sensitive. You could hear like birds in the background in some of my videos from like outside my window or sometimes you would hear people opening and closing doors and having conversations and it just started getting annoying, especially when like I'm trying to explain something and I constantly hear this background noise. At first, like as I'm recording and I'm hearing all these subtle sounds everywhere, I don't think the camera's picking it up, but it picks up every little thing. So it started annoying me and I just thought it's finally time to get an upgrade and finally get a Yeti microphone. So it is really bulky and big. There's not a whole lot of space on my desk for it, but I still really love it. The quality is excellent. So I'm hoping to use it regularly from now on. Finally, back to the painting. I really enjoyed working on it but the details on her hair was a little tricky for me to capture. I just ended up using my Craypaws extender to make the pigment like cover up more of the paper. And especially in the more detailed areas, it was really tricky to get into those tight, tight spaces and make sure all the white dots were covered up. So I definitely did have to use the extender stick and it did come in handy a lot. So I'm really glad that I had that available. The background was actually my favorite part because it involved me blending all the pastel colors that I had and it's really satisfying to feel like the smooth texture of oil pastel while applying it to a large area. Like you can feel the texture of the pastels kind of mixing into each other and like applying on the paper and it's just a really satisfying feeling. So I actually want to try and start making detailed tutorial videos of how to use oil pastels because I'm surprised there aren't that many good oil pastel teachers out there, or at least on YouTube I haven't seen. So that got me interested in probably doing that for future videos, and especially since like a lot of the work that I've been doing lately has been done in oil pastel. Whenever I show someone, they get really surprised. At first they can't figure out what the media is, and then when I explain to them that it's oil pastel, they get really surprised and they say, oh wow, who in the world uses oil pastel other than children? So I definitely want to like teach people how to use oil pastels because there's so many different ways to use it. And it's, it's really different from other medias. Like I've tried almost all of them out there and I've never, I actually didn't like oil pastels at the beginning, but now that I've gotten more into like pastels and just blending and like feeling the texture of different medias, I definitely think oil pastels are like one of the top most enjoyable to use. So I definitely want to try that out for future videos, hopefully. And that's all I really have to say for this video. I really hope you like the painting I did for you, Tracy, and I'm going to ship it out on Monday, so hopefully you'll be getting it soon. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.